Okay, welcome to this quick tutorial of how to create the, the Claude Monet um, outside your window is what we're going to be focusing on. I have my crayons and I have my paper here and you're going to watch me go ahead and recreate the Claude Monet that we're working on. So now that we have our colors and everything, let's get started by quickly bringing the bridge across like so. Claude Monet has the the bridge here and the bridge is almost like a green white bridge that is across here. So I'm going to highlight the white by bringing this blue right on the edge of the railing of the bridge to start off. And then he has these poles that come down. And here's the part where you walk across the bridge at the bottom here. I'm gonna get my green, almost like a blue green that I notice he has here at the bottom. And that's really not the blue that I want, but Gonna have to do here it is okay so I added my I mixed my two crayon colors together to get this blue green effect here he even has a railing that comes right through the middle here and he has the railings here here and like so. Okay. All right, I'm gonna bring my bottom right over here. Top railing is done. All right, I'm gonna put my white back over top of these just to add a little bit of a smoother look to the colors. Sometimes we feel like white doesn't really work, but when you add multiple colors with it, it really creates a nice look to it. So now let's go ahead and start to add in some of the shrubbery, the green shrubbery that he has here at the top. He has a lot of green trees here. And I'm gonna add them in as almost like circles, but they're not circles. They're just quick little etchings or quick strokes is what he's known for since he's an um, impressionist painter. So you're going to have a lot of your little green here. And then you're going to mix it in with some yellow or some green yellow. But everything is going to have a color to it. So you're not going to see this background here. This white background that I'm drawing on. Painters didn't leave big white gaps in their paintings unless the white was blending in with the colors and, and changing the space to become a, a part of the painting. So we don't want to leave any colors with any of the drawing with just these white, white patches. I know sometimes we want to just say, oh, I'm done, I'm done with the work. But we have to make sure we're representing everything well that we're recreating so that the emotion and feeling come across the page well. <clears throat> I'm gonna add a little bit of brown in the under areas right in here, a soft little browning to the leaves, almost like they're fall color leaves. Changing down in here. Now this is a really soft brown. It's not a really harsh color. 
<clears throat> and I noticed there's some orange right under the bridge area. And then a little bit of orange in here too, where the leaves have just a little bit of changing of the seasons on them. Back over here, it has that also. And then I noticed that the tree over here has long leaves or drooping tree look um tree leaf areas or or stems that are just drooping like a drooping weeping willow and they come down onto the bridge behind the bridge so i'm going to add those in and then he has a little bit of brown in here too and orange And this area right here in the middle. Has some brown leaves. And I'm gonna add some green with it too. So if you notice right here in the crayon, this is the flat part of the crayon. So I'm using that to create depth in shading as I'm working. I'm not using the tip of the crayon to create because that's not gonna give me, the, that's gonna give me a hard line. And I'm really not looking for a hard line. I'm looking to blend in here and really get in the colors of what was being portrayed of this garden scene here. So make sure you're, you're using your crayons well and you're not rushing through and trying to just color in because that's what you think you want to do. He has some blue here, like a soft blue. Right back up in here with his brown and his green. I'm gonna add some green with the blue <clears throat> so it won't stay that way. It won't just stay harsh blue, but we'll get our good greens in here as the forest is changing colors. Maybe this is a springtime picture, maybe a fall picture, um, but the varying colors of the leaves and of the shrubbery really give us an idea of what season this is for this Claude Monet. And when you're creating an impressionist piece, you really are just getting the feel for what it was like to sit outside that day. You're really not trying to create specifics, but you do want to get a feel for what the, the piece is like or what it's like to be outside that day. Now there's a pond down here. So am I just gonna go ahead and color blue down in the pond? No, I'm gonna take my time because there's lily pads in the pond. There's lily pads, there are uh, pieces of seaweed growing or water shrubbery. So I'm gonna take my crayon and I noticed that right over here, there's this called pond grass. So he has pond grass here and I'm gonna add those right in here on the side, this pond grass. And I noticed there's some green, I meant orange, and red coming up from the pond grass where there is a little bit of ripening of the pond grass right over in here. And then he adds the green back inside of that red because it looks like the leaves in the, um, the, the pond f um, foliage has taken over where the water is growing. So let's get some more blue in here. And there's a reflection of what is grow happening here in the water. 
So there's a little bit of green in the water also where it's reflecting what's happening above. And it goes off to the side like so. And we really have to struggle with how to portray white lily pads or, or green lily pads. See, the green is kind of easy. But how do you add in white lily pads on top of the water? White is, is really a difficult...